What's up guys? This is Luke from Worldviews in Conflict and today you're about to be watching a video of uh, us, my dad and I at the climate change event protest and we, I, or I had a discussion with a couple you're about to watch that um, they just drove down uh, pretty tired from travel but they were very gracious or willing to talk with me. I asked if we could record the conversation. They were like, oh yeah, that's totally fine. We want to get this message out. So it was like an amazing opportunity to share the gospel of going to a protest. Everyone wants to talk. So <laughs> um, anyway, uh, I'm gonna check back in a few while you're watching this video and then uh, we'll talk about it. So how did you guys uh, get involved in this movement? Uh, researching. We wanted to figure out a way of getting involved one way or another and try to find out the best way to do that and striking is by far one of the best because poli political change is what we need and this is the best way to voice your opinion so yeah, I think we make a lot of steps at home like we've been cutting down meat and being careful of what we buy and reducing plastic but sometimes you feel like is my impact making a difference so it's nice when you can see it like this where everyone's actually coming together and hopefully the governments are going to take note of that as well. And so um, you guys have made personal changes in your lives. Uh, like how, extent, how far has that gone? Pretty far actually. Like we grew up eating meat our whole lives and we've completely kind of cut it and dairy. We do have a probably cheat days now and then of dairy. That cheese is our weakness, weakness yeah. I guess. Yeah. It is hard. But I mean it's a transition I guess so we are transitioning to vegan at least we're a lot more aware and now the more we read we're like I can't believe we grew up eating meat all the time and not thinking about it but so that was a big one for us and cutting Plastics. down our plastic waste like my company is actually all around um, zero waste shaving and non-plastic shaving and we try if we need new clothes check the thrift store first before going to the new shops but definitely not perfect like a long long way to go like we could still make improvements. slowly but surely but we're getting there so yeah, yeah. yeah so um, what was the tipping point so I'm not sure have you guys um, studied both sides of the argument like seen both sides um, what was the tipping point for man we, I got to get out here and do something like wh what was that like final thing that pushed you to that edge uh, I read the yeah. uninhabitable earth I can't remember who the guy is that wrote it um, that, that was after that. <laughs> yeah that took me down really really hard actually for a few days and like I was just then that's when I started to really research like all right it's time to do something now it's just, it was scary actually like it was very scary so. so like did you weigh both sides or was it just that book it was like oh this is convincing uh no I mean I've been reading a bunch I guess not much of the other side um, yeah, I do understand I will not understand but I, I know what their arguments are against but um, or I'm aware of them we've but been more pro science yes yeah. and we've always been pro science I think yeah yeah, yeah. it's hard to yeah. read too much about the other side I guess but. yeah okay that's fair um, so so for me um, on like I'm doing a little channel it's called worldviews in conflict and so it brings different worldviews do you guys know what a worldview is just a world view yeah uh, no, I guess so it's just um it's uh it, it maybe is a different term you're familiar with but um, it's kind of just the understanding that we filter our information through and so for example like uh, I, I discuss things from like climate change to abortion to um, what happens after we die and um, people through their worldviews filter information differently through that through that means and so um, what's what's kind of the foundation of your understanding in terms of you said you were like into science um, is it more of like a humanist like uh, maybe this is uh, too too deep but is it like a humanist like science based belief or is it something deeper like a lot of people out here I was speaking with um, they say well you know like and I, I maybe come from this worldview I'm a Christian and so I would say well, we're created by God and we're actually supposed to steward this earth and take care of it and that it's a gift and um, and obviously we don't do it perfectly <laughs> and um, that maybe the core issue isn't necessarily like big corporations but sin and what, what's your thoughts on that uh, 
I would say uh, we, we probably come from more of the science perspective on uh, you know reading what like what change has been happening and, and science what science is revealing currently and the patterns throughout history uh, and the impact of humans through that and um, I think uh, other than science just the humanity of like the treatment of animals and the treatment of people and yeah. like, I don't think you don't have to be either religious or non-religious to see like the, the behavior just isn't right like it's not yeah. kind so we're addressing this issue from two different worldviews hence the name worldviews in conflict and really what we're seeing here is um a lot of arbitrary comments from, coming from a non-christian worldview think about it oh well we come from a science background or you know we we come from a uh like oh just think about the humanity of it all right and so we're, we're coming from that context and so to that um, I think a fair objection that so many have said and so many have put um, to those statements is so what ultimately from a from your worldview ultimately so what if we care about humanity so what like maybe the earth is bigger than we are we should we actually care about ourselves or care about our neighbors um, anyway I don't focus too hard about this and in, in the conversation I want to lead it to the cross I know that, you know, Romans 1, they're suppressing the truth in unrighteousness. So I know I just have to uncover that and um, they, are, they are believing some lies and I'm just going to present the world, uh, the, my worldview, <laughs> the, the gospel and um, pray that, you know, that they come to a faith and repent and turn to Christ. treating the planet very kindly at all, so... Yeah. I think it's great that there's both religious and non-religious people here. I think from, we're from the UK. I mean, it's yeah. not as religious in the UK, like yeah. our upbringing. Um, definitely more on the spiritual side, but I don't believe in one particular God. I believe in, in good for everybody and, and for the planet. And, and yeah, so that's meaningful for me because um, I would say like we're made in the image of God and that we actually have a conscience and that this is like a moral movement founded on justice. And that justice, um, apart from God, I would say, gets a little arbitrary, as in like saying, well, I just determine it for myself, and you can't really know anything for sh certain or for true and, uh, in terms of morality. Uh, and then I, I have to always answer back, is that true? Um, do you guys, um, do you believe that we determine truth for ourselves, or is there an objective truth outside of us? To that one. I, I got um I got an interesting response earlier today. It was a guy. He's like, I think it's and legitimately. He's like, I think it's aliens. Aliens gave us all the info. Like and um and he's like, there's no God, aliens. And I'm like, okay, that's interesting. Yeah. And so we talked about that for a while. But um I do believe, yeah, it's a it's a God-given conscience that separates us from the animals, and that He has actually given us a conscience, um and that we violate it constantly and so um and he's moral he's good he actually determines what is good and um i'm not perfect morally are you guys moral people would you consider yourself to be a moral person definitely yeah i i mean i'd like to think so i mean i i go about my life always thinking of others and putting the planet first and not being selfish and definitely have a strong moral compass i would say i'd like to think so yeah. Yeah, I think the fact that we have the ability to be more conscious uh, over other beings or animals on this planet, therefore we we have to be the ones that care for it and make sure you know we look after it in the future. So whether that's you know a religious explanation or whether that is through science and the fact of how we've evolved as 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 creatures on the planet, you know, like we we hold the power to make the biggest difference so my my, um, my actually my high school physics teacher was a christian and he used to say that he thought the bible was just a beautiful way of pulling science together so i i thought that was really interesting <laughs> like how he combined the two worlds like they can work together yeah yeah and i would say um not so much that you can't have science without christianity but that christianity actually gives a meaningful justification yeah for the act of science, meaning that um, I can have a meaningful justification for like the laws of logic, induction, 
the uniformity in nature because it actually comes from a mind and that um, it's not purposeless and um, evolutionary per se, that we, um, it's not random, but that actually it's um, with purpose and with a mentality and like, like things and everything is, uh, like it's called like uh, the fanciest term, I'm trying not to use it, but it's like the irreducibility uh, um, of, the, of complexity, meaning that if you were to take one part out, none of it would really work. Um, irreducible complexity. It's kind of a fancy term and so uh, so I'll, I would um, pose that what I want to do is give you guys a meaningful justification saying that God exists but actually like God of the Bible exists and that um, if he's good and he's moral I fall short in terms of moral perfection like that's what the dictionary it has like 40 different director di uh, dictionary definitions sorry my mouth's a little dry um, of good and the top one is moral perfection. And for me, like I've told lies. Have you guys ever lied? Of course. White lies. Yeah, nothing terrible. <laughs> More like, you know, did you do your homework? Yes. Like, I don't know. Nothing, nothing sinister. But yeah, so that's not moral perfection. If I'm a terrible liar, though, he can vouch for that. Yes, he's a terrible liar. <laughs> but that's good for me. So. <laughs> there we go. Oh, and then, um, like, have you guys ever stolen anything, like, irrespective of its value? No, I wouldn't go that far. Um, have you? I mean, I've cheated, maybe. I've never stolen anything great. Maybe, no. no. I think everyone has stolen something. Stolen. Irrespective of size, at some point in that, it's like, uh, like, it's like a test when you're a kid, almost. You know, you're pushing, pushing boundaries or something. You know, seeing how far you want to take it. It's like, uh, so that's like the Ten Commandments, right? Um, like, thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not, um, like, commit adultery. Uh, have you guys ever like killed anybody? Actually, Jesus took it a step further, and he said, if you uh, hate your brother, that is murder in your heart. Have you ever hated anyone? No. Not without very good reason. So that's yes, then. Well, yeah, but very rarely. Yeah. <laughs> no, I have to, so I'm totally, yeah. And so um, what I would propose, in, to in terms of just having a meaningful justification, not an arbitrary one, that if, we, if it's all evolutionary, and I would, I would put this forward and say that if we're all from stardust, ultimately, that bacteria that at this temperature, with this amount of time, is just fizzing, like soda, that we're like fizzing at this temperature. I would say, well, there's no moral accountability to just fizzing at this temperature, and that we're actually moral creatures, and that, um, and that because of, he's moral and good, and he judges justly, and so, um, from like a Christian worldview, are you guys familiar with what Jesus did on the cross? I mean, he died and then got resurrected. He died on the cross, right? Mm -hmm. Do you know the legal implications of that? Legal. legal implications. So if like we're in a courtroom and we're guilty before a judge, like, and he's about to swing the gavel to send you to prison, what Jesus did is lived the perfect life we couldn't, died the death we deserved, and then um, he paid the fine, right? He paid the fine in court so God can legally dismiss the case. And that our response to that is just we trust in him and his goodness and not my own. And that free, uh, eternal life is a free gift. And that gives us a moral justification for caring about the earth, for caring about science and all these things. And it's, um, it's been a really fascinating discussion out here. Does it make sense? Yeah. No, I, I think it's, like I said, I think it's great that there's like, all different walks of life coming together for like one common cause. It's, it's great to see. Awesome. Well, thanks, guys. I appreciate the conversation. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for coming down and taking the time in Bend and just on your trip. Uh, we were saying, be like British Columbia. Yeah. Uh, how long was the drive was that? Ooh, about eight, eight or nine hours down. Yeah. Did you uh, stop much when on your way down? A motel north of Portland, which wasn't the best, but it was an experience. <laughs> awesome, guys. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for chatting. I'll let you get back to it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah.